Champs is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. State Champs also working in partnership with the Indiana High School Athletic Association. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another jam-packed edition of State Champs. 35 weeks a year serving the Hoosier High School community. State Champs is presented by Lawrence Technological University. My name is Lauren Plant. Now, Jenna Skalski is in Italy for the next few weeks. Allow me to introduce to you Daniela Bruce. Now, in Michigan, Danielle is a State Champs veteran. She's my current co-host for State Champs RoboZone, which is all about competitive robotics. Go to RoboZoneTV.com to see all of that goodness. But Daniela, thank you for being here. I'm excited to be here. A little jealous of Jenna that she's in Italy, but oh, yes. I, I'm excited to be here. And like many of you watching, I'm a huge high school sports fan, and we've got a full slate of highlights for you this week. Our main event is an absolute thriller from the softball diamond. You guys, you have got to see what happened in that one. Scott Bernstein will also be along for the latest and greatest recruiting news. That's right. We had a chance to sit down with the commissioner of the IHSAA, Bobby Cox. Lots of news out of that conversation. Let's begin the show on the tennis court. It's sectionals time to Ron Colley. We go. We begin with girls tennis. The Plainfield Quakers squaring up with the Ron Colley Rebels. Senior night for the Rebels, parents proud, of course, so are we. Let's serve this one up. We start in one single. Plainfield sophomore Jordan packs up against Roncalli's Emma Hess. Hess getting out ahead early, using the net to her advantage to get the point. But Pax would respond on a good volley and with the good eye, ball out of bounds, a back and forth battle kept it going. Hess gets the point after Pax could not return her play. The Plainfield sophomore would get it done in the end, returning cross court out of reach to take the one singles match. Now to two singles. This is junior rebel Megan Zakrowski and Plainfield freshman Emma Kessinger. A good volley between the two looks to be anyone's point. Kessinger's return out of bounds to end it. Zakrowski looking to finish this one off after dominating the first set. Plays a hard ball to Kessinger, unable to get it back over the net. Run Colley responds to even it up. Up to one doubles. Kirsten Martin and Claire Harper representing Plainfield. Another Claire on the other side for Ron Colley. Claire Wagner and Cambry Lux in for the Rebels. Both sets a battle in this matchup, but the Rebel pair getting it done here, causing Martin to play a tough shot to no avail. But the Quaker ladies came out on top in this one. Some nice line returns resulting in a hit in the net. That would be it for the girls of Plainfield as they took the day, winning four of the five matches over Ron Colley. I'm Gabe O'Neill here as we hit the field for some boys lacrosse. We had the Bishop Shatar Trojans on the road to face the Heritage High School Patriots. Let's get into the action. Bishop Shatar on the attack early in the first. Freshman attack Nick Mates sets up the dodge from X, beats his man around the cage, and finishes high for the goal. Heritage now looking to answer. Sophomore Reed Garrick fires from the top. The shot is blocked. He gets his own rebound and finds the back of the net on the second attempt. The Trojans pushing in the second quarter now. Hank Mason gets it behind the net, looks to feed, but is knocked down. Junior Andrew Squire is there to pick up the trash and finishes in close despite taking the hard hit. Patriots in the second half making things happen. Senior Eli Hastings finds Garrick who fights through his defender and lights up the board for his second on the contest. But the Trojans would finish this one out in the end as senior Will Freiberger's alley dodge pays off as he finds Twine with the nice on the run shot. Bishop Chatard pulls out a close victory over Heritage, 11-9 the final score. Well, since the inception of the success factor, we've had um, about 50 member schools that are public schools and 50 member schools that are private schools that have either moved up or moved down from one classification to another. So it does affect uh, how those classes are set up. 
and uh, ultimately it could even affect where we host some of those events. So it's, uh, it's changed the way the classes are formatted and it also changes uh, who is in each of those tournaments, uh, each school and, and what tournament they uh, reside in for the two year period in that particular sport. So it, it does have an effect. We realign and reclassify all of our team sports prior to the annual meeting, which uh, ex with the exception of baseball and softball. Because baseball and softball occur after the annual meeting, we wait until August of the next school year to begin the reclassification and realignment of baseball and softball. And uh, our realignment committees for baseball and softball will meet the early part of August, and uh, that will be after we've applied the success factors to both those sports and then we'll have a format ready to present to the executive committee at the end of August at their first meeting of the school year. Well, it is difficult. To, when you're in metropolitan areas, it's not too bad, but when you get in the northern part and the southern part of our state, where schools are fairly far apart, then it becomes a challenge, and the more classifications you have, the increased travel distance there's going to be. And so it, it becomes a challenge for our realignment committees to construct a sectional that has the minimal amount of travel time and some natural rivalries and some, some contests and some tournament games that folks will come to. So it's really, a, it's not as easy as it seems. Uh, you have to make a, an alignment that's congruent to the rest of the state. Uh, I've always said that anyone can sit in their own school and draw a perfect section around their school, but it has to be congruent to the rest of the state. And there are always some outliers in every classification in every one of our sports and they have to be included. So to do that, sometimes you'll have some sectionals that have some pretty good distances to them. I think the most difficult thing to deal with is just make is try to keep it as balanced as you can. Uh, we try to uh, construct six and seven team sectionals so that competitive balance is as equal as we can get it. And we've done both. We went through a period of time when travel expenses were very high. And so our membership was more concerned about distance. And so we had some five-team sectionals that would be right up against an eight-team sectional. And as we progressed through that continuum, the membership, particularly coaches, felt like we want to try to get more to a balanced number of teams in our sectional. And so we try to get six and seven-team sectionals wherever we can. That doesn't mean we don't have some five-teamers, and in some cases even four-teamers. But uh, we try to do that with the eye in mind that we will keep those games as close as we can together, but also try to achieve some balance. Well, we used to be four years, and, and what's happened to us in the last 10 years, we've added 26 different member schools. And because of that, that changes not only alignments, but it changes classifications. Our customary way of dividing classes is to take that number of schools that play in that tournament and divide them equally. So let's take basketball as an example. And let's just assume we have 400 basketball playing schools of our 410 members you would draw those lines at 100 each. Well, when you add 26 schools to your membership, and all of those schools that have been added in the last 10 years, with the exception of one, has been a 1A school. That means there's 26 schools that move up to 2A, and 26 schools that move up to 3A, and then 26 schools that move up to 4A. Well, when that occurs, it changes the dynamic of the entire tournament. And so, because we're adding member schools at a, a more rapid rate than we used to, we now realign every two years. This summer, the uh, National Federation of State High School Associations, the NFHS, will host their 100th annual summer meeting, and they're hosting it here in Indianapolis. This is the first time that the meeting has been in Indianapolis, and since it's their centennial and they are located here in Indianapolis, uh, the IHSA will be the host state institution for that event, and we're excited about it. A lot of special events planned around the state is the uh, summer meeting and the IHSA will be thickly involved in helping to host that event and extending our Hoosier hospitality to our friends from around the country. If you love state championships like we do, you have got to check out our special long form state championship highlight shows. Already this year, we've done it for wrestling, girls basketball, boys swimming, gymnastics, and of course, boys basketball. It's all on our website, statechampsnetwork.com, as well as our Facebook and YouTube channel. We received great feedback on these programs, and that's because it's more of what you see right here on State Champs. And the best thing is, they are all sports specific. 
We'll be delivering digital championship editions for every spring sports state finals, and those will drop one week following each finale. We head to softball and much more when State Champs returns. I've always been really good at math and science, and I knew I wanted to work in healthcare, but not as a doctor. So I chose Lawrence Tech's biomedical engineering program. I've pushed myself to take internships, like this one, at a hospital in an orthopedic research lab. Thanks to Lawrence Tech's unique, hands-on style of education, I'm graduating with a published research paper and a job. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. I love working for Strike. I'm genuinely excited to come to work every day. We support each other and look out for each other. I love Stryker because we are like a family. At Stryker, I own my career. There are so many different places Stryker can take me in the next five years. Together with our customers, we are driven to make healthcare better. Great people with a strong mission and values can accomplish great things together. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. I'm Sean Belegian here as we hit the diamond foot now for some baseball as the Tigers were hosting the second ranked Columbus North Bulldogs. Bulldogs added early with Grant Trickle in scoring position, no outs. Junior Homar Takuchi rounds to third and gets thrown out at first but still scores Trickle for the first run of the contest. Junior Adam Chapman up now just a little bit later with one on at second and the one-two pitch, he swings and drops it into shallow right field. That would be good enough to get the runner home and take an early 2-0 lead. Second inning now with the Bulldogs up 4-0 after a couple of errors from the Fisher infield. Trickle now up to bat, no outs, man on third. He cracks one through the middle gap, scoring Kyle McIntosh to extend their lead to a nickel. Now, fourth inning, Columbus still rolling. Trickle back on at third with catcher Austin Bode at the plate. He sends that one right back up the gut and into center field for an RBI single. Bulldogs increase the lead to 6-0. Tigers now at bat in the fifth, down by five after scoring on a pass ball. Freshman Dominic Olivero steps up big here, driving one back deep to the center field wall, scoring the runner all the way from first. Still in the fifth now, Tigers gaining some momentum. Runners on second and third, shortstop Nick Lukic up to the bat. He wastes no time driving the first pitch into center field. That would score both runners, and Fishers is right back in it now, only down by two. Columbus keeps things going on offense, now up by three in the seventh. Man at second with Reese Harmon up. The lefty rips one to first, who makes a great stop, but the throw is off to the pitcher, and the error would allow the runner to score for Harmon to get an extra base, 8-4 Bulldogs. Final frame for the Tigers, runners on the corners. Lukic does his thing once again, getting the ball to drop into right center, and that would score J.J. Woolwine. 8-6 now after a pass ball scores one more, Senior Daniel Owens comes up clutch here with one out, two on. His big left field shot would score Lukic to pull the Tigers within one run. But the rally comes up just short as the final batter pops out to Bode. Columbus North escapes a close one with Fishers 8-7 the final score. All right, welcome into The Rundown. I'm Scott Bernstein. I'm here every week at State Champs talking about high school sports in the state of Indiana. This week, we're going to talk recruiting. Let's start with a little basketball. Noah Jager, the pistol of a point guard at Bloomington South, has committed to Army. Tough as nails out of the backcourt, a feisty floor general, uh, just the, the prototypical pace setter, uh, smart and savvy. He broke the Bloomington South single season assist record last year on a Panther squad that won a sectional. Let's move over to football, talk about some quarterback news. Uh, Donovan McCauley from Lawrence North, 
in my opinion, maybe the highest upside of any quarterback recruit in the state of uh, Indiana. He got a Cincinnati offer. He already has Indiana. Uh, over in South Bend at South Bend Adams, Ira Armstead, one of the hottest recruits uh, this offseason has already picked up 20 offers, just got Princeton. Most of his offers right now come from the mid-major ranks or the Ivy Leagues. I expect the big boys to start sniffing around soon with this dynamic dual threat. Threw for over 2,000 yards, ran for over 1,000 last season as a junior. Uh, then let's move over to Brady Allen, the Fab Frost from Gibson Southern. For my money, he's the best overall field general prospect in the state of Indiana right now. He's recently taken visits to Indiana, Purdue, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, and Ohio State. Uh, right now, he's got offers from IU, Purdue, and Va Tech. Uh, threw for 2,500 yards and 30 touchdowns last year as only a freshman. The future is crazy bright for Brady Allen. Let's now finish off with some guys on the line in the trenches. Uh, East Central's Luke Collinsworth, uh, 6'7", 300 pounds, just a mauler at the point of attack. He recently picked up Indiana and Purdue offers. And then Rodney McCraw from Elkhart Central, uh, defensive end, just raw potential, raw power, raw instinct coming off the edge, going after quarterbacks. 50 tackles as a sophomore last year, five sacks. He just picked up an Indiana offer. Uh, check back next week on The Rundown. I'm Scott Bernstein. We are storytellers here at State Champs, and we love hearing from you about high school sports stories that we need to share right here on the show. We also love hearing from you guys on what you think some of the big games are that we should be covering. Message State Champs Indiana on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Or you can simply send us an email. The address is contact us at statechampsnetwork.com. More highlights from this week in Indiana high school sports when State Champs Indiana continues. I admit it. I love working with money, negotiating, and making big decisions. That's why I'm majoring in finance and economics at Lawrence Tech. What's truly amazing about the education here is the small class sizes that give me easy access to my professors who truly care about my future. They even helped me get a great internship. And I was able to fulfill my lifelong dream of playing college golf. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. Welcome to Hungry Howie's. We ordered one of the new stuffed flavored crust pizzas. Sorry, when my stomach talks, I always listen. Of course I'll share it with you. Do not use that language with me. Flavor starts here with fresh dough made daily and 100% real mozzarella cheese. Order a large two topping pizza for just $7.99 and make it a stuffed flavored crust for only $2 more. Hungry? Howie! Since the dawn of man, storytelling has been the most effective and engaging means of communication. Whether gathered around the warm glow of a fireplace or the family television set, a compelling story has always moved people to action. At Yellow Flag Productions, the Emmy-winning storytellers behind our television programs are now helping clients create content that emphasizes their people and passions. Let us tell your story and share it with the world. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Wayne hosting a doubleheader against Northside in Summit Athletic Conference play on Saturday. Top of the first, catcher Jaden Gonzalez guns to third and throws out Tegan Army. Torin Gonzalez with the tag. But bottom of the frame, some defense from the legend. Denver Wilson can't make the play, but Cameron Walker backs him up and retires Leontay Warren to end the inning. No score after one, but that would change in the second. Jaden Gonzalez on the squeeze play that would get Dre Walton home. Generals up one to nothing. Then in the fourth, they would load up the bases and add to their lead thanks to a walk to Letarian Minifee. That would get Ben Domino home and the bases would remain loaded.
On the next bat, Alfonso James clears him. He shoots one into deep right field and the three run double makes it five nothing Wayne and that caps off a four run frame. Next inning though, North gets one back. Max Miser singles to right, that would be enough to score Chris Bauer and the legends were on the board now down five to one. Bottom of the fifth, Domino with the liner to left and Walton would come racing home to make it a six to one lead. Then Johnny Carvajal provides some insurance. A deep drive to right that gets Domino to cross home plate and the Generals would go on to win game one, eight to two, earning their second SAC win of the season. Time now to take a look inside Lawrence Technological University. LTU recently held the DECA District 6 High School Competition. DECA stands for Distributive Education Clubs of America, where students prepare for real-world situations, which gives them the skills they need to be leaders in their future careers. We're just looking forward to hosting an environment where students can learn a bit more about business, uh, presentation, professional communication, and hosting that here on LTU's campus. LTU held 826 talented students from 21 local high schools on campus, along with their teachers and parents to take part in the DECA competition. Students competed in 26 events with nearly 100 judges working the competition. Following, there was an award ceremony for all the individuals that won their event. The competition was also a great opportunity for high school students to get the experience of being on a university campus for a whole day and see what the type of courses Lawrence Tech has to offer. If you're interested in learning more about Lawrence Technological University, head over to their website, ltu.edu, right now. If you love esports and you love League of Legends, check out the replays of our State Champs esports season. Over 50 schools from Indiana and Michigan are taking part in this league and the tournament championship this weekend right here at Lawrence Technological University. You can watch the entire tournament on our State Champs esports Twitch channel. Follow State Champs esports on social media. If you weren't a part of it this season, get ready because this fall it's all about Rocket League. Esports are the fastest growing sports on the planet and State Champs is embracing it. Go to statechampsesports.net to check it out. The main event in softball is next. I love working for Striker. I'm genuinely excited to come to work every day. We support each other and look out for each other. I love Striker because we are like a family. At Stryker, I own my career. There are so many different places Stryker can take me in the next five years. Together with our customers, we are driven to make healthcare better. Great people with a strong mission and values can accomplish great things together. Welcome to Hungry Howie's. We ordered one of the new stuffed flavored crust pizzas. Sorry, when my stomach talks, I always listen. Of course I'll share it with you. Do not use that language with me. Flavor starts here with fresh dough made daily and 100% real mozzarella cheese. Order a large two-topping pizza for just $7.99 and make it a stuffed flavored crust for only $2 more. Hungry? Howie's! I chose Lawrence Tech for the architecture program and volleyball team. Architecture is a great fit for me because I love math and design. Now I combine them with technology to create beautiful structures. At Lawrence Tech, I didn't have to wait until my third year to start designing. Our hands-on education begins right from day one. And I'm really excited about LTU's Design Center in Detroit. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. Kevin Trzinski here with you. What time is it? Main event time. A Hoosier Heritage Conference matchup that saw two top teams in the state going at it. Number five in class 3A, Yorktown Tigers. At home, as they took on number four in class 4A, the Pendleton Heights Arabian. Yorktown coming into this matchup at 13 and six. Can they keep up with the Arabians who only have three losses on the season? This game started briefly on Thursday night, but mother nature had other plans. So this is our spring version of Friday Night Lights. Let's start this game right back up. Pendleton Heights trying to keep things rolling as they have all season long 
and they are up to zip. Chloe Closter up to the plate. She's not swinging, but her teammate Ali Hall will still for third. Throw is in time, but cannot be corralled for the out. Runner from first also advances to second. Closter still up at the plate, and she will smash this one into the outfield. That solid hit allows Allie Davis to score along with teammate Kelly Ryan. Closter sliding into second safely. Pendleton Heights now up 4 0. Closter back up to the plate again. This time she will aim towards the fences. Back, 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 but not enough as Savannah Baker is there for the easy out. Pendleton Heights just too hot on this night. Jordan Benefell had a perfect game through seven with 15 strikeouts. Her teammate Grace Conkling up at the plate with one on at first. Her hit will reach past the outfield fence. Pendleton Heights defeats Yorktown seven to nothing your final. Um, going into the game, I knew that they were good hitters, so I knew I had to bring my best tonight, and I, my team backed me up well, so that was great. Um, I mean, it made us like check, check it up a little. I don't know, it was a little different, but I think we did fine with it. Um, I've been hitting really well, so I was just sitting on the inside pitch. That's my favorite pitch, so when they throw it in there, I'm just ready to drive it. So um, I love to drive in runs for the team. It builds confidence and gets everyone hyped so we can get more runs in and gets everyone going. So Yeah, I mean, it makes, it makes it easier on the defense, you know, when she strikes out 15, you know, that's only seven chances. There are uh, six, six chances that we have to make, and, you know, we made a nice play in the, in the hole. Uh, Kylie Davis did, and uh, we got a, a fly ball to Chloe. Uh, so it does, definitely helps the defense. All right, guys, we're done for this week. I want to thank Daniela Bruce for jumping in the host chair this week. If you liked her, good. She'll be here next week. If you didn't, too bad. She'll be here next week. <laughs> I know you liked her. What's not to like? Of course, and I'm glad to be back next week. It's been a lot of fun. And, guys, playoffs are kicking off in a variety of sports. So the next month of shows are going to be exciting, no matter who is sitting next to Lauren here. But thank you, Lauren. I can't wait to do it again. All right. Now, if you're a fan of this show, we close with a quick showdown of rock, paper, scissors. Jenna has had my number, but D. Bruce is about to go down. I'm pretty good at rock, paper, scissors. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Bye. Oh, How no. about that? He likes when I host. <laughs> State Champs is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. State Champs also working in partnership with the Indiana High School Athletic Association.